the Sogo department store. So this Japanese Zen garden that you can see in the background is actually not outside in nature. It is in the department store on the ninth floor over here in Taipei. And uh, right now, there are a couple of predictions left, of course. What about operating systems? Um, that's going to be a good one. Uh, last year, we told you guys it's Android, Android, and a little bit more of Android. Guess what's going to happen in 2011? It's Android, 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 and a little bit more and more and more and more of Android. Because uh, it will totally control and rule the market. But uh, what, what Google did by, by buying uh, Android back in 2005, I think that was pretty much the smartest move they, uh, they ever made since they uh, uh, established the company. So uh, it is easy for, for manufacturers over here, especially in Taiwan and China, to get an Android operating system uh, on their platform, whether it is a smartphone, whether it's going to be a tablet. We also saw a couple of netbooks with Android, but please forget about these because it just sucks on a netbook. It's, it's, it's not meant to be on a, on a clamshell device. But for tablets and smartphones, Android will be the number one by the end of this year. Well, maybe not because I'm not sure how long Symbian can survive, right? But we already know that the market shares of Symbian are going down significantly. So what about other operating systems? What about Windows, uh, Windows Phone 7? I think Microsoft had a pretty good start. I think they sold right now 1.5 million Windows Phone 7 uh, platforms so far. So this is something that I actually wasn't expecting at all. And it seems to, you know, it's, al it's always the same. Never underestimate the influence and impact of Microsoft. So they have this marketing budget to really get something into the market and to let us know that we want this device. I'm not sure if I want a Windows Phone 7, sorry to say that. And I think they have another big challenge ahead of them to, to convince developers to develop applications for their Windows Phone 7 platform. And right now, because of all these restrictions and all these limitations, I think this will be, will be really a tough challenge for them. Uh, what about iOS? Of course, iOS is super successful. I think Apple said 275,000 or 300,000 iOS devices are getting activated every day, but that means iPhone, iPad, and of course also the iPod Touch. Um, it, 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 will, it will still go up in terms of market shares, especially with the iPad. The iPad is, is, is just the best seller for Apple, or it's going to be the best seller for Apple in, in, 2000, in 2011. I, I might even think of that they're going to sell more iPads uh, than iPhones. And um, well, what's left? We have WebOS with HP. Not sure if you're going to see a WebOS smartphone. Maybe we're definitely going to see a WebOS tablet. HP is still the number one uh, on the on the computer market. So they have the distribution channels to get a device into the market, a new one. So never underestimate HP. And then we have Intel with an Intel and Nokia with Nego. I'm still not sure because we are we are missing we're missing platforms, we're missing devices with Nego. I think it is a fantastic operating system. Every, everything that I saw from Nego on a netbook, I also have some Nego netbooks on, let's say some netbooks where I installed Nego back home, and I really love the, the speed of it on a netbook form factor on a netbook platform. Uh, on Intel Atom CPU, Migo is definitely, in terms of performance, the operating system number one. It's, it's really hard to challenge it right now, uh, what Intel is doing with it. And Nokia really needs a solution. They, I'm pretty sure that their high-end phones that are formerly were running on MIMO, of course, are getting our, uh, are switching over to Migo. So this gives Intel a chance to get their x86 atoms onto the smartphone, uh, into the smartphone market, and this will give Nokia a chance to finally get rid of Symbia, because I think that's what they need to do to survive, especially in the smartphone market. Sorry to say that, but Symbia is not cool anymore. It's the same with RIM and, uh, and their Blackberries. You know, the kids right now, and people really want to get a smartphone where they want to surf the internet and want to, want to do all the social media and networking updates. They're going for iOS and they're going for Android. So they really have to change this. I'm pretty sure they will. 
Well, I already talked about uh, RIM and BlackBerry a little bit. I think the BlackBerry Playbook with Tablet OS is just the first little sign uh, for, for change for this company. And this is something they also have to do. Um, I'm, I'm a huge BlackBerry fan. I, I've been a CrackBerry addict for three years. I switched over to Android back in August because it, it has so many disadvantages in terms of how I can experience the mobile web. It's hard to, to, to experience the mobile web on a BlackBerry device so far, but I still love it with, with a physical keyboard. I still love the form factor of it. I love the BlackBerry Messenger. So if they can build a kind of mashup between the tablet OS and, uh, and what, what BlackBerry uh, is, 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 is known for, means a text machine, a working horse, then I think that RIM definitely has a chance. Besides that, um, operating systems, well, I'm not talking about Windows operating systems in general, right, or Mac OS X, so we're, we're staying mobile. Besides uh, operating systems, what are, what are general trends for 2010? I really believe in mHealth and eHealth. Um, it's going to, show, uh, going to change um, the health industry, the way we are Getting, getting connected to our doctors. So we will have little sensors on bandages that we can just, you know, stuck on our, on our body and uh, our, our doctors can, can kind of control our body functions and we can record all this. So this is going to be a huge market. I'm sure that also the whole health industry, all, all the health insurance uh, companies are really looking forward to this because I'm pretty sure that um, this the health insurance companies are going to be a distribution channel for these platforms and these devices. Another interesting thing is, I already said this last year, it's about displays. Um, I've been telling you about Mirasol displays and Pixel Sheet displays. These are still, well, Mirasol isn't a small company because it belongs to Qualcomm, but Pixel Sheet is still a pretty small company, but a very, very innovative one. I think finally, what, what, what we will see in 2011 is these e-ink displays will come to the market, will heavily hit the market, whether it's in tablet form factors, whether it's in clamshell devices, and even in smartphones. So I'm, I'm, my prediction for, for 2011 will be that new display innovations, technologies will be all over the place and we can finally buy them because they are be they're getting cheap enough to squeeze them into a new device. Besides that, I think that's a pretty much. Uh, um, we will still see, see growth on the mobile computing market, of course. New devices, devices are getting more powerful, they're getting cheaper, and they will be available everywhere, anywhere. And you will go to the internet anywhere and everywhere you want. So this is Sasha for NetbookNews.com with our prediction for 2011. And by the end of 2011, you know, you can call us out on this again. So just leave us a comment if you are right or not. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year.